Overthinking not only impacts a person's emotional well-being, but also hampers their productivity and efficiency in various areas of life. In professional settings, perpetual worry can lead to decreased focus, diminished problem-solving capabilities, and increased absenteeism, ultimately affecting overall job performance. Overthinking frequently leads to heightened sensitivity to perceived slights or issues in personal relationships. This can give rise to conflicts and strained communication with family members, friends, and romantic partners, potentially leading to isolation and social withdrawal. Excessive rumination and overwrought concern often precede the development of mental health conditions like anxiety and depression. The unending cycle of pessimistic thoughts, self-doubt, and apprehension can result in emotional distress, impeding individuals from maintaining a stable and wholesome mental state. This mental health crisis profoundly impacts an individual's overall quality of life. A man had been visiting his guru for many years, attending sermons, serving, and practicing meditation. However, he consistently felt a sense of stagnation in his personal growth. Years had passed since he first sought the guidance of his guru and listened to his teachings. He began to wonder if perhaps only his guru could address this persistent question. With this in mind, he decided to approach his guru one day. Upon meeting the guru, the man was invited to sit beside him, and the guru inquired about the nature of his problem. The man expressed his concern, noting that more than two decades had passed since he had been initiated. Despite his relentless efforts during these 20 years, he found himself perpetually dissatisfied. Time had flown by, and he was now approaching the age of 50. His hair had started to turn white, and he had invested two decades of tireless work. Yet, he still couldn't locate a sense of fulfillment leading him to question if his life would remain unfulfilled. The guru reassured him that it would take an additional two years for him to grasp the truth. The guru handed him a bag filled with seeds and instructed, take these seeds and plant them in the fields when there are three consecutive days of substantial rainfall. The man returned home with the seeds and eagerly awaited the suitable weather. However, days turned into weeks and weeks into months Yet the much-needed three consecutive days of rainfall failed to arrive. Occasionally, there was a single day of rain, sometimes a day and a half, and on occasion, two days. But the elusive three consecutive days of rain continued to elude him. Finds joy when the rain begins, but plunges into sadness when it eventually ceases. This pattern persisted for several months, and he started feeling downcast whether the rain lasted three consecutive days or not. These thoughts preoccupied his mind. Then, one day, ominous dark clouds gathered, and it poured incessantly for three days. A profound sense of boundless happiness awakened within him. He retrieved the seed bestowed by his guru from the bundle and planted it in the fields. In the subsequent two months, those seeds sprouted. The seeds developed into trees, Yet he remained unaware of their identity because he hadn't sought guidance from his guru regarding them. During the third month, flowers began to bloom, and soon the surroundings were adorned with their blossoms. Butterflies danced around, and people, seemingly from nowhere, arrived to admire and inhale the fragrance of the flowers. He had never encountered so many individuals in his life, nor had he ever witnessed such a multitude. He pondered the source of this influx and felt disconnected from them, as they were strangers to him. Where have all these people come from? He marveled, as they showered him with praise, bought his flowers, and some even rewarded him. The fame and aroma of his flowers spread far and wide, reaching cities, villages, the entire country, and even other states. No one could have fathomed such an extensive cultivation of fragrant flowers. Their scent carried for many kilometers, beckoning even distant passers-by to return for a glimpse. Amid this wonderment, he contemplated sharing this extraordinary tale with his guru. 
However, he recalled that his guru had instructed him to return on the same day, one year later, and not before. Thus, he contained his excitement and endured the passage of time, knowing that his year-long commitment was not yet fulfilled, all the while brimming with happiness. He amassed a substantial fortune by selling those flowers and constructed an opulent residence. He enjoyed a blissful life in the company of friends, radiating happiness and engaging with people in his community. He seamlessly integrated into the local populace and eventually rose to prominence as a community leader, earning widespread respect. However, the scenario took a turn as temperatures began to soar and the scorching heat prevailed. The flowers wilted and over time the entire field parched. Visitor numbers dwindled gradually and only one or two individuals now came to call. He journeyed to Sirsa to seek the guidance of the Guru, bowing in reverence. The Guru responded, No words are necessary. I am already aware of everything. The Guru then handed him a container of seeds, instructing, Plant these seeds only when there's uninterrupted rain for three days. The man returned with the seeds, carrying a sense of sadness about his unspoken burdens. Yet, the Guru's previous statement echoed in his mind, assuring him that there was no need to vocalize his concerns. Though disheartened by his inability to voice his thoughts, he remained unaware of the Guru's foresight, which encompassed all. He returned home and anxiously awaited the rain, taking comfort in the prospect of regrowing the same flowers. As the fragrance wafted through the air, he envisioned his ascent to fame, the admiration and rewards of the people, and the successful sale of his flowers. He reveled in these thoughts, gazing at the bundle of seeds and relishing his anticipation. He waited for the rain, but it eluded him for an extended period. Days passed with one, then two days of rain, but the requisite three days remained elusive. After several months, he couldn't help but feel despondent, questioning whether he would ever witness three consecutive days of rain again. He pondered if the Guru was trying to convey an enigmatic message that eluded his comprehension. The rain was conspicuously absent this time, in stark contrast to the past when it had rained after fewer days had passed. Then, one day, dark clouds amassed, and a torrential downpour persisted for three consecutive days and nights. The deluge was so intense that the upper layer of the field eroded. His consternation grew as he contemplated the additional effort required to rehabilitate the field. The topsoil had been washed away, and the rain ceased abruptly. Despite the formidable challenge, he toiled tirelessly to prepare the field and planted the seeds. This time, he didn't consult the guru about the seeds' nature, but had assumed they would yield flowers. Gradually, the seeds sprouted, and vibrant flowers adorned his field once more. He was surprised to see the small size of the flowers this time, and patiently waited. He thought that maybe this time the trees would bear fruit. However, after a few days, he noticed that green chilies were growing on all the trees and a bumper crop of these green chilies had started flourishing all around. Gradually, the chilies began to turn red, and parrots started coming to the field. The parrots ate the chilies, but this time, no butterflies or bees appeared, and there was no fragrance in the air. There were no beautiful scenes, no passers-by coming from afar to admire the fields. This time, it was entirely different and he was puzzled about the secret behind it. He started feeling a bit anxious, but also curious about what would happen next. As the heat increased, the chilies continued to turn red, fell into the field, and started drying up. The entire field dried out, and the chilies began to burst, scattering all over the field. With the rising heat, they were carried by hot winds. People's eyes and throats began to burn, and visitors stopped coming. They avoided the area wherever the wind carried the chili particles. People both praised and criticized him, wondering why he hadn't harvested or found another solution for the chilies,
but had allowed them to fall into the field. Now these chilies were causing discomfort to people's eyes and homes, and anger was growing against him. All the animals and birds fled, and he was left alone, frightened. He had to protect himself from the stinging chilies, covering his face with clothes day and night and sitting facing away from the wind. This continued for many months, and he yearned to meet his guru, but the guru had told him to come after a year. It was becoming increasingly challenging for him to endure each day. Eventually, the day arrived when he could visit the guru. He narrated his entire situation to the guru, but the guru was already aware of everything. The guru said that, I understand everything that is happening with you, but can you comprehend it? Guru stated, I know everything that is happening with you, but can you grasp the essence of it? The key to understanding lies in recognizing who you are and your origins. Do you know where you were born? The response was, no, I have no recollection of how I came into existence. As I grew, people informed me that this woman is your mother. She gave birth to you. Nevertheless, I remained unaware of the circumstances surrounding my birth. The guru commented, you don't remember your birth, nor do you recall your parents. You were informed that these are your parents, and only then did you identify them as your parents, those from whom you were born. Did you bring your family with you? Can you recall anything you brought with you when you were born? The response was, no, I have no recollection. The guru continued, you've acquired knowledge, attended school, made friends, built a family, and have children and a wife. However, were any of them with you when you were born? Did they accompany you to this world? The reply was negative. The guru pressed on. Did you have any wealth or means to sustain your life? Were you ever concerned about having enough to eat or drink? The response was, no, I didn't worry about such matters. My mother provided for me, and if she lacked something, she arranged for it. The guru emphasized, you've been receiving all of these things without even knowing where you came from or whether you'd have them tomorrow. Are you now convinced that you're the one making all of this happen or have you been here for 20 years without much changing? What do you desire or expect? The individual reflected and responded, I am unsure of who I am or what I am called. The Guru continued, You didn't bring yourself into existence, nor did you choose your parents or your home. Did you have any thoughts or make choices before you were born? The reply remained negative. I don't recall how I was born, who my parents are, or anything of that sort. The Guru concluded, You have no choice, yet you assert your existence. The Guru then questioned, when you claim that you've nurtured so many flowers, were they truly your creation? Did you plant those seeds and provide nourishment to them? The individual stood silent with no words to respond. The Guru then declared, You are free, and you have been free from the beginning. You've bound yourself with the notion of I. The word I is your greatest obstacle, preventing deep meditation and true freedom. Do you truly exist, or are you merely assuming your existence? The individual admitted, No, I don't remember anything. The guru affirmed, You are nothing. You are assuming that your perception is you, and that assumption has given rise to your world. The guru continued, You didn't bring anything with you, but you were nurtured and taught how to eat, drink, and feed from your mother's breast. Your milk and sustenance were provided without any effort on your part. Now you believe you earn, and you think these children are yours to feed. This I is the source of your suffering, your bondage, and your limitations. The Guru concluded, if you seek refuge in enlightenment, you are already free. You will continue to receive all you need. With that, the Guru fell silent. The disciple remained in meditation, finding ultimate liberation. 
If you found this information useful, kindly give us a thumbs up to support our efforts in reaching a broader audience interested in ancient wisdom. If you're a newcomer, consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell for additional lessons on ancient wisdom. We appreciate your viewership and we look forward to seeing you in our upcoming video. To access more content, simply select one of the videos currently appearing on your screen.